Tracy Martin. Mr Chair, thank you very much. Um, I, I can't say it's a joy to follow Mr Seymour in the debate. Um, and and it, it is interesting that Mr Seymour brings into the debate, the debate how people came into this House. And I think of all the people in this House who should not mention babysitters or special treatment or other ways that have been manipulated by this government to allow Mr Seymour to sit here to participate in a debate. Um, it, is, it is not he. He should not speak of such things. Yeah, yeah. And I think also that um, it's interesting that Mr Seymour suggests that, suggests that um, it, only those that are reasonable would want to push forward this referendum bill and not waste the House's time. And it's interesting that Mr Seymour now stands for referendums when actually, when there were larger issues, and, it, and actually every other party in this House has lost their ability to take the high ground with regard to referendums. Every other party in this House refused the New Zealand public binding referendums on other issues only in the last four years, issues that would have made massive social change. And yet they treat, somehow they treat the changing of the colours that we carry into the world without the same level of importance. They would not allow the New Zealand public to express their voice around marriage amendment or alcohol laws or other laws, but around this referendum bill, Mr Speaker, apparently it's okay to trust the public. Mr Mackendo, Mr Mackendo waxed lyrical last night at how wonderful and magnanimous it was that the government was responding to 50,000 likes so that this referendum bill is now here. And yet, when the, when the people of New Zealand stood outside and asked for a voice over another bill only in the last three years, this House said you can't be trusted with it. You can't be trusted with it. And the other thing that I think is very interesting, and I want to acknowledge the contribution on this bill last night by Mr Mallard, where he acknowledged that the Labour Party had been naive to participate with the National Party, with the National Party, go and have a look at the transcripts, Mr Foster Bell, I was here. Mr, Mr Mallard recognised that the Labour Party had been naive by participating in what they thought was going to be a cross-party conversation with mutual respect with the government around the creation of a panel of people to select the flag designs, and then to go forward, and then to also create the bill that would show or put through the way that the referendum would be done. And Mr Mallard quite clearly articulated <laughs> that it was at that committee that they believed, and everybody on the committee supposedly agreed, that the first referendum question would be yes or no. Do you want to change or not? But apparently the government overrode that. So I, I want to recognise that Mr Mallard gave a nod to the wisdom of New Zealand First, who said, we're not going to participate in this charade. And the charade continues. The charade continues with this bill, sir. Yeah. Not only, not only was there the charade of a cross-party political consensus to form the panel that selected four designs, four designs that nobody wants, or 70% of the New Zealand doesn't want, but there was also the charade of that there should only be four, that the panel should be independent, that nobody should interfere with it. But when the polls start to turn, when the polls start to turn and it looks like the Prime Minister won't get his legacy, the item that he wants to have run up the flagpole that everybody sees his name on it in the history books, when the polls start to turn, suddenly that independent process can be affected. Suddenly it's quite okay and somehow it's now responding to the will of the public. Now when New Zealand first actually listens to the public and when they say we want citizens initiated binding referendum, when New Zealand First responds to that, puts it in their manifesto, they're accused of being populist. How much more populist could one be by deciding to put legislation into the House off a Facebook vote? Right. Not even a scientific Facebook vote. Right. A vote where you don't know whether uh, 10,000 people did hit it five times. And yet, apparently, this is not populist politics. Apparently, this is worthy of the time. This is worthy of the time and the money of this House. And it's interesting that those who wish to rush it through for whatever reason they hold themselves, 
Suggest, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, Mr Chair, suggest that it is those who stand for the current flag, those who represent the 70% of New Zealand who, who don't wish to see change, those who represent the 70% of New Zealanders who do not want to see $26 million run, wasted on this referendum when there are more important issues, those of us who stand for the history of this country and those who fought and died under this flag, those of us who wish to truly hear the voice of New Zealand, not on a Facebook-like page, not on a Facebook page, but on a scientific poll, apparently we are now accused of, by the ACT Party, of all people, of wasting Parliament's time and money. By the ACT Party, of all people. One of the largest wastes of time and money in this Parliament. So it's interesting, sir, that those who want to push this through, those who want to push this through, are accusing those of us standing up against this legislation tonight of wasting Parliament's time and money. Well, we will continue to stand against it. And I think the other thing, too, that's interesting, sir, is this push through for flags. And I want to now uh, speak about Mr McIndoe's contribution to this, to this bill yesterday, where Mr McIndoe um, again waxed lyrical about his personal preference. And obviously, I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I'm making a statement that I prefer the flag that has the history that we currently have. And I, we also note that there's now a push to include, by the RSA, to include this New Zealand flag in the first debate. Mr Mallard suggested that that was possible. Mr Mallard suggested that this bill has been so badly written that this bill could pass, it could go back to the executive, and the executive could, now that Parliament has interfered in the process and removed the independence of the panel, could decide on a whole new series, a whole new five flags, and put them in front of the public. The question New Zealand First has not only about is will there be a commitment that that will not happen, will this legislation be amended during the um, supplementary order st stage to make sure that actually we'll crash all those and start all over again with whatever the Prime Minister likes, or perhaps the Prime Minister and Richie McCaw could get together and tell the country what they think we should have. But how much money extra will this cost? How much extra money now, by deciding we're going to change the independent process, is this going to add to the 26 million bill that has already been budgeted for this event? Mr Seymour shouts from the side again with no knowledge or understanding. Um, and it is interesting that he shouts from the side because the government continues to protect him through the status he holds here. They don't allow Mr Seymour to be questioned. Nobody can question Mr Seymour because he's under the protection of the government through his parliamentary secretary role. And yet he continues to order, advocate. Order. He continues well, to advocate. Order, order. Now look, it's, this is well uh, wide of the, um, of the content of part one. So I ask the member to come back, part one. So th that particular member argues for this legislation in the House. This particular member, who cannot be scrutinised in any way, stands and argues for a change to the, what is the historical emblem of this nation. Um, and we would question that. We question every part of this process. We question every dollar spent on this process. And New Zealand First will continue to question every dollar spent on this process, sir. We will not be supporting this bill. It comes as no surprise to anybody we won't be supporting this bill. Not only should there not be any other designs, there should not be five designs or four designs. And Red Peak is not, with only 50,000 likes, has not been shown to have popular endorsement. So I think I've made my point fairly clear Mr. S Mr. Chair, um, we won't support the bill. We stand for the current flag. We don't stand for the wasting of this, this House's time and House's money. But it wasn't New Zealand First that started this waste of time and money. It was this government and John Key.